Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. So, um, bro, listen, the thing is, bro, listen, right? The, see, yeah, you know, so, so, again, so, yeah, go on, finish it. So, um, I actually don't really have so much of a problem, for example, with um, uh, with the likes of Salafi publications in the sense that if they really, for example, uh, Allah bless anyone who is hardcore on, you know what, um, let's just say the Salafi, uh, Salafi Aqidah is, let's just move Ibn Taymiyyah and just say, when, when we say Salafi Aqidah, we mean anything before the 6th century, okay? Let's just say that for argument's sake now. I'm following the Salafi Aqidah and the Amshari Aqidah is wrong. I have no problem with that. As long as you're saying it to the right people in the right time and not making, you know, someone who's not praying into, you know, you know, giving out of priority, no problem. I have no problem who someone who says that actually, um, if you can look at it from one angle, you can actually say that Asharis and Athari Salafis are all Ahl Sunnah. I also have no problem with that. As, same thing, as long as it's based upon scholarly, uh, scholarly uh, understanding and you're not making a big issue uh, with it. Um, so the problem today isn't really with um, um, people having different ideas and understandings, as one of you quite rightly said, Modernity has thrown up so many, uh, you know, so many curveballs. We just, you know, we have to kind of rethink so many things. My issue is that at least don't say that such and such is the Athari Salafi way, based largely on Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and a set of scholars who followed, 30, uh, you know, 700, 600 years later, I think include Sheikh Ibn Abdul Baha, um, because research will verify, and here's the point, here is something which is not subjective, it's objective. Research will verify that that's not true. Just research, and I've done a lot of that even in English, but there's just so much out, out there. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone says, I want to, if someone says, I'm, you know, Salafism on the path of Sheikh al-Albani, as opposed to on the path of earlier still, um, I, I, I think we can we can kind of live, we should and we could live with that. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is just an opinion, a subjective opinion. Just like a subjective opinion, if we if we agree on the all, and both of you, I felt, were cross-wired. Uh, Sheikh uh, Abdurrahim said that at the end. As far as you said in the end, I think we're, we're cross-wires with each other. So you're asking for a change in the name of Salafi because it just doesn't mean, it means well, it may, means mostly bad, not just the Muslims, so the world at large now. And, and Abu Haki is about reclaiming the name. So let's agree with this, uh, at least on Sheikh al-Albani's principles, because it's primarily Sheikh al-Albani's principles. Um, Ahl al-Sunnah from 400 years, 500 years before Sheikh al-Albani, even when the Ashuris were there, they didn't say, let's change the name. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah being one of those long line of humbly scholars who are against Ashuris, um, he starts his Aqidah one the year with Hadi Itiqad, you know, the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. He calls it Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Aqidah of Firqat al Najat al Mansura, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ila Qiyam al Sa'ah. Let's, let's at least historically agree that it was more or less with one or two scholars before Sheikh Albani, but it was more or less Sheikh Albani who pushed this idea that Ahl Sunnah is just so unclear now. If you're coming from a mother of the Salaf perspective, of course, it was unclear by the fifth century when Ghazali was born. It was unclear what Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is from the uh, eighth century. Even Taymi was there. You had yeah. Hanbali, Athari Aqidah, then you had the Ashari Aqidah, and both claimed Ahl Sunnah. Mm. And it was certainly unclear when Sheikh Albani uh, was around. But Sheikh Albani made a decisive break with the historic past, and he said, It's so unclear, we need, a, we need a new term, or we'll pull out from the hat a historic term and make it new. It wasn't that scholars in the past decided to use the word Salafi, it was Sheikh Albani. So use, let's use his principle. Sheikh Albani's principle is this. If a pure word or a pure term that helps define authentic Islam or orthodox Islam, orthodox Islam 
if the pure term that defines orthodox Islam at some point becomes hazy, then we should get another pure term to define orthodox Islam because one of the things about orthodoxy, it must be distinguished from heterodoxy. There is an obligation to distinguish haq from batil, sunnah from bid'ah, orthodoxy from heterodoxy. So we agree on the principle, that Sheikh al-Bani's principle. Sheikh al-Bani's principle was if a pure term that uh, distinguishes orthodoxy becomes muddied, then we should find another term to, clarify, to, to make it clear again. Now, the question of how much does it have to be muddied, for how long, and what term to use thereafter, those are all subjective. Those were not... Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, Sheikh Al-Bani didn't receive revelation. He didn't follow the Salaf in this, did he? Yeah. No, he, he did it from his own, his right. own mind. He thought, he thought <laughs> in the 14th century, um, say let, let's say 80 years ago, for argument's sake, we need to use the word Salaf, Salafi in a very strong, in a far more stronger, decisive manner. It wasn't that... He had a precedence for this. He had a precedent to distinguish truth from falsehood. Name to us your men, Ibn Sirin, Sahih Muslim. If they said people of Sunnah, we would accept their narrations. If not, then not, or words to that effect. Um, but when do you change it and to what is very Ijtihadi. Mm. So actually, both of you, in this sense, could, could both rightly represent the Albanian approach, because you both agree that if, because even you, uh, that you want to cling on to the term and purify it, but you don't disagree with the principle that if it becomes muddied beyond repair, move on to another term. You just don't think it's beyond repair. You think it's salvageable. Ustad Abdul Harim Green doesn't think it's salvageable, but you both agree in the principle. Okay, um, then those kind of things, you know, fine, they wouldn't make a difference. The big difference is that at least we know that Salafism today, not just in its cliquey mod, mod, uh, movement, haraki form, but even as a concept amongst students of knowledge and even sheikhs, is slightly disconnected with what it was from the past. In principle, not just in detail. And that is something that is objectively one can see and research, not subjective. Now, someone, will, just sorry, I've gone on. My, my only last point is of course, if a person isn't looking into all of this, they won't know. But we generally have that rule of thumb that the one who has the evidence is the one who should be followed. We respect them, but we want them to respect us. We think that the law should respect the Negro community. The law should protect the Negro community. The law should approach the Negro community with intelligence if it expects the Negro community to react intelligently. <laughs>